Hello, Bish. Hello friends, welcome back. It has been a while, I missed you guys. And I guess before we even get started with the video, I need to address that we have hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel. Thank you for supporting me, and if you don't, suck my d I truly see all the love, and that's why I try to like respond to all your comments and engage as much as I can, because I really, really love this community we have built for ourselves. I just feel like this is a really fun, positive space. I just love that for us, and I hope we can continue this, and yeah, just thank you guys so much. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna stop gushing. To celebrate, I thought we'd have kind of like a chatty video. There's this one eyelash that's really bothering. It's like a chunk. A little better. Nope, it's doing it again. I want to chat and do something a little bit more personal because something I noticed, you know, I tried making videos in like high school and a little bit in college, but that didn't really go well because I was severely depressed. <laughs> so I dabbled in making videos, but then all of a sudden on this channel, I showed up and was like, hey, so uh, <laughs> I moved to Japan. <laughs> without like any explanation whatsoever and looking back on it i really wish i documented this whole process because honey it was it was a mess to say the least i thought i'd finally share on my channel how i was able to move to tokyo and more specifically how i was able to afford to move to tokyo because i see in a lot of the comments a lot of you guys are also thinking about moving to japan yourselves so i'm hoping by sharing my experience this will be even somewhat helpful for you guys but i understand that everyone's circumstances are very very different so i also know that tokyo has a reputation for being a very very expensive city to live in and that is partially true so on a global scale well, yes, Tokyo is an expensive city. Japan is like the third largest economy in the world But I guess as someone who came from San Francisco like girl, it's night and day <laughs> I think Tokyo was the best decision for me being a fresh college graduate because there was no way in hell that I could afford living in a major city in America. <laughs> like I truly believe if you want to live independently in Tokyo, you can do it. So this is just my experience and my advice for how much money I think you should save up in order to move to Japan. So anyway, let's get on with the story. <laughs> So I think we'll have to go all the way back to my junior year of college. So junior year is where it all started. This is when I first studied abroad in Japan for one semester. And after those four months, I realized that my time was not up yet. I needed to come back. I just knew that Tokyo was the place for me. Sometimes you just visit somewhere and you know when you just have that click and you're like, oh, I'm meant to be here. I felt that like to my core. I knew I had to be in Tokyo and I had to make my way back as soon as I graduated college. And that is what I did. I just remember like bawling my eyes out on my plane ride home because I knew I was just gonna miss Japan so much. But it really gave me that drive and motivation to find any way I could to make my way back here. So long story short, I came back to California. I finished my senior year at USF. <laughs> Go Dons! <laughs> But anyway, right when I graduated, I definitely did not have the funds to just move my whole life to Japan. I worked all throughout college. I barely had like any savings. So the most economical choice for me was to move back to San Diego, move in with my parents. I was in a very lucky position where I could just move back in with my parents and save money on rent. And I knew that summer I was going to need to get a full-time temporary job. So funny enough, I actually worked in a secondhand clothing store. If you guys live in America, maybe you're familiar with Buffalo Exchange. It's basically a recycle shop where you can buy and sell clothing. So I just ended up working there full time during the summer. And girl, I was making a minimum wage. I think at the time I was making about $11.45 an hour. And I was contracted as a full time worker. So I was guaranteed 36 hours a week. So in the summer, I was just like busting my ass. It was by no means a chill job, especially because it was summertime. The store was constantly packed. It was just one of those jobs where you're on your feet 24 7 8 hours a day And on top of that because I knew once I got to Japan I was gonna want to travel a little bit within the country. I needed that extra money So I actually was also doing a little bit of Postmates on the side Postmates was basically just like a food delivery service So on the weekend when I wasn't working at Buffalo Exchange I would borrow one of my parents cars and just drive around delivering food <laughs> and with that I was able to make just a little bit of extra money and I was just 
really adamant about saving up as much as I could before I got to Japan because I did not have a job lined up. Like I was going in there blind. <laughs> I seriously had no idea what I was doing. I was just trying to get myself there and was hoping I could figure it out on the way. But I guess my mindset at the time was like, even if I go to Japan and I didn't manage to find a job and I wasn't gonna stay, at least I made a really good trip out of it. So after saving money on rent by living with my parents and working full time, I was starting to feel pretty confident about my savings and I was ready to book my flight and because it was just a one way, it was like half the price. I remember from San Diego to Tokyo, I think my flight was about $500 and booking my flight was such a big moment for me. I was like, oh shit, like this is really happening. So once I booked my flight, I had to start thinking about my accommodations because I didn't want to just stay in like an Airbnb or a hotel. So when I was studying abroad in Japan, I was living in a dormitory. D dormitory? Dorm- but a lot of my friends were living in share houses. My friends told me that they were actually able to book their share houses before they even moved to Japan. So I scoured online and found a couple different types of share house companies. And if you guys want to know, I stayed with Gigi House. They had really, really affordable rooms. And from the pictures, the houses looked really, really clean. I was able to book this room online and it was so affordable. I think it was about 45,000 yen a month. And that roughly translates to about 450 US dollars, but probably even cheaper than that. I've talked about share houses before on this channel but it's really popular among foreigners it's basically how it sounds it's just a house that you share amongst everybody and you get your own private room everything like the kitchen and the bathroom and the shower is shared amongst everyone in the house but y'all that first share house that i lived in was tiny i really wish i took more pictures or videos of it at the time but you guys like i could literally touch both walls <laughs> I'll try to insert pictures from their website, but my room was just like a really narrow room and it was a loft style bed with a desk underneath. Even the kitchen area was super small. There was like no dining table. It was just the kitchen and only like one person could cook in there at a time. It had one shower and two toilets. I knew that it was just gonna be temporary. I just needed a place to sleep when I first got to Japan and I was gonna figure out the rest later if I did find a job. Also another thing I took care of before even moving to Japan was my cell phone plan. I just researched online. I found this mobile plan that was month to month and you could get the uh, SIM card at the airport. It's the one I still use today. It's from mobile and I think it's seven gigabytes of data and it's a flat rate of 4,500 and it also even comes with a Japanese phone number. So I've just been using that ever since. So I was feeling really good because I got all those things set up and I think they're really reasonably priced. And at this time, I was also emailing a lot of companies in Japan. At the time, I really wanted to be a videographer, LOL. <laughs> so I was emailing a lot of like bilingual or like English-based video production companies and none of them got back to me, so. That was cool. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about finally arriving in Japan. <laughs> I could be wrong because this was over two years ago, but I believe I came to Japan with $8,000. And that lasted me approximately three months without one paycheck. <laughs> and you could really give or take just depending on your circumstance. You definitely could get away with less if you already have a job set up. I know a lot of English speakers move to Japan through the JET program. So you already have a secure job when you come here, but I just... <laughs> I did not, but I was just winging it. So eight thousand. <coughs> so once I arrived here, I felt pretty good about my savings. So I did not hold back. I was really just like living my best life. I was taking my friends to all the fun places in Tokyo. We even took a trip to Kyoto, Osaka, Nara, and we were able to save quite a bit by taking overnight buses in Japan. The Shinkansen, the bullet trains, and taking planes is obviously a little bit pricey. So if you take overnight buses, they are much cheaper less comfortable but cheaper and also we were staying in these hostels that were like dirt cheap but it was so much fun i have so many fond memories of when i first got here but once we finished traveling and got back to tokyo and we're trying to settle in a little bit i was trying to be a little bit more strategic about how i was spending my money so in the little share house kitchen i began cooking a lot of my meals at home i was always making my poor man meal which is just korean rice i was eating a lot of curry at the time like a lot <laughs> And luckily for me, tofu, vegetables, rice, they're all really, really inexpensive. So those were the main ingredients that I was cooking with most of the time. But that's not to say that I wasn't going out. Like, girl, I was going 
out like every weekend. I was that bitch going to the izakayas, going to the clubs, going to the cute themed cafes. So as you can imagine, I was really burning through my wallet because everything in Japan is just so cute. So I was hardcore job hunting around this time. Finally got an interview around the end of November and I was asked to come back for a second interview, asked to come back for a third interview. I remember going to my third interview in December and literally like right before Christmas, I found out that I got the job. That was the first Christmas that I spent away from my family. So it was just really, really good news because getting that job meant that I did it. Like I can now live here in Japan. So that was a crazy exciting time. Um, I started right after winter break after New Year's. So by January 2019, I started working. But the tricky thing was I wasn't gonna get my January paycheck until February 20th. So I was really like <laughs> holding on with my very last penny until I got my very first paycheck. So at that first job, I was making 250,000 yen, which is like relatively okay for for an entry level job. So I was feeling kind of ready to move out of that tiny, tiny share house. And I moved into another share house, but the room was much, much bigger. The room that I moved into was 16 square meters, which was like a decent amount of space. <sighs> okay, I'm starting to burn up after this video. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope it gave you a little bit of insight into what my personal experience was moving to Japan. And for those of you who are thinking about moving to Japan yourselves, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm happy to respond to you. Comment down below or if you moved here yourself, please leave advice in the comments. Okay, I've been talking for long enough, so I'll wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye bye